Welcome to another episode of Psychic Diaries. I'm Michael Lamport. I am the uh, narrator and uh, producer of the show Rescue Mediums. And with me is the indefatigable Jackie Dennison, who is the host of Rescue Mediums and also the owner of Feathers Academy of Clairvoyant Mediums in Cheshire, England. We were so lucky to have with us um, Dave from uh, Entering the Unknown. And uh, we're going to ask him a few questions about his experiences with the paranormal. So hi, Dave, and thanks for being with us. Thank you, Michael. It's a pleasure to be here on your uh, show. Great. So I guess let me ask the first question. When did you first get involved or had experiences with the paranormal? Uh, back in, we first started our team up in 2017. So we start, I started having paranormal experiences before that, uh, but it wasn't as strong as it, what it is now. I seem to have more paranormal experiences now that I've, I've been out investigating than I did before. Uh, whether that's through uh, physical touch or hearing things, seeing things, or in dreams as well, because I get a lot of dreams as well now. That includes uh, past family members, actually. Huh. I, I, I love uh, with the dreams how they can do that with you, um, and, you know, and you know it's a visitation. Do you, do you get that prior to going on an investigation? Uh, do you get uh, dreams that will connect you to the place you're going to go to? I don't get the dreams that connect me to the place I go to, but I do get dreams from family members like my dad and my brother, my late mm. brother. Uh, and both have been quite physical where they have, we have hugged, hugged each other and spoke to each other. So I know from that that it's not a dream, that it is a, a visitation. Because uh, I actually woke up one time when after I'd been chatting to my dad, um, we hugged each other. I actually woke up crying because it was that emotional. Mm. So you, you, you can really tell when it's not a dream and it is a visitation. Yeah, yeah, ab absolutely. It does, it, feel, it just feels completely different, doesn't it? Yeah, it does, yeah. yeah. What you can always do as well, Dave, is something that I, I've done, is ask them if they can leave me a present. You know, physically, can you physically leave me something? Uh, for me to find the next day you know and very mm -hmm. often you find that there's a feather that just appears from nowhere or a coin that just appears from nowhere and you just get that feeling you go okay thank you for that yeah yeah so i have had uh also had i've been getting uh nightmares as well where i've been uh either phys physically attacked when i've been sleeping mm. or it's been quite scary where it's woke me up mm. and i've had to snap myself out of it uh, whether that's related to what I'm doing now, I don't know. Or if it's related to my partner who is living in America at the moment, that's got a lot of problems in her apartment where she's she's being attacked, her son's being attacked. Uh, and this has been going on for four or five years now. And it's it's constantly every night. Uh, oh, we, get, we get paranormal experiences. Uh, so, and they have seen orbs, they have seen shadow shadow figures we have seen things out of the ordinary that aren't human as well so mm. whether that's whether i'm getting the feeling of that as well coming through to me uh yeah. i don't know mm. yeah, yeah i mean is that, she, that can any help with she is she's trying to get as much help as she can i mean she's had she's even at the the uh church involved as well to try and see if they'll come out and do things they've been out twice and then the priest that came out would have come back again uh they've had mediums there that have gone in with different equipment and they've had a team in there they've been doing things with the ouija board which i don't think was right at the time <laughs> uh, so it is it's and i have been we have been told that there is there is a portal at the back of the building now the the, the apartment that's the grounds that it was built on before that was a, a, a mansion was there uh, um, and they've had contact in this apartment now it's, it's, it goes in different levels it can go from one room to another uh, and yeah. some people in the apartment have, have, have left after a year because they can't put up with it oh uh, and uh, 
the, the, the third voice is where they've said, uh, this particular one says, I want to go home. I want to go back to Egypt. Oh. Uh, my partner said, well, Egypt's not the same anymore. It's not like what it was when you were there. It doesn't matter. I want to go back to Egypt. I want to go home. So whether something was taken from taken from Egypt and brought to the mansion that was there before. Right. And is still there. It could be buried oh. under the foundation. We don't know. Uh, but you, re you think that uh, they've had contact with Anubis and other other things that say it's Anubis, but they don't think it is because it's, it's too negative. Yeah. But so. it is true that Egypt um, did traverse the ocean very, very early on. Uh, they went to, uh, in Canada, they went to Nova Scotia. Mm -hmm. And there's lots of artifacts from Egypt uh, in Nova Scotia. And, you know, how did they get there? Well, mm -hmm. they, they obviously were transported. So I guess it's the same in the States. Yeah, yeah. And they think that's what it is. Something's been taken from Egypt illegally or it shouldn't have been taken away. Mm -hmm. And it's attached to this certain relic, whatever's there, and it just wants to go home. Mm. So there's lots of other manifestations coming up and lots of activity going on. I've heard voices over the phone when I've been on video chat with my partner. I've heard her son's name called. Oh, yeah? And I've turned around to her and said, did you just call your son's name? And she says, no. I said, well, I've just heard it clear as anything through the phone. I've heard when, when you heard it, when you heard it, Dave, did because you, you said, did you call your son's name? Yeah which indicates that you've heard a female voice. Yeah, yeah, it was, yeah. 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 So, so you're dealing with the female energy there. There's, according to some of the mediums that are over there in America, there's several different kinds of entities over there. Yeah. For one, there's a shapeshifter. Mm. Uh, one's, well, actually there's two, and one's negative and one's good. Uh, mm. Because they have seen a shape of a dog as well. Uh mm dealt with shapeshifters we've had yeah, one uh, rescue mediums haven't we michael yes, yes the we yeah very very difficult to deal with and until mm -hmm. you find out why they're why they're moving in that way way you know yeah. you've got to get through the layers of energy uh there yeah um <clears throat> you the background behind you um is uh entering uh the unknown paranormal yeah, see it. yeah there we go Tell us about um, that. What, what, what does your group do? We are a team of paranormal investigators from skeptics to believers to uh, medium. But we've got a team, Andy. Uh, some of us sit on the fence and some don't. Some are believers, some are non-believers. So it's, it's a mixture of everything, really. That's uh, good. Mm. And we've just we've just got Gemma now who's coming in as a, as a, a training parapsychologist. She's trained to be a parapsychologist, so mm. that's going to be even better for us because she's going to come up with all these experiments where, where it's going to be more scientific as well to see what what we can prove and what we can disprove really as, as we do investigations. Yeah. So we're we're just like a really big family really. We just knit together and we're all friendly. We. We never have any fallings out or anything. I think this is the best team I've ever had, to oh, be honest. Good. We've, good. Had, we've had one or two different teams in the past and they've, they've come and gone because we don't like doing this, don't like doing that. We all chip in together. We all work hard. We all There's no there's no bosses in our team. If we've got a problem, we sit around the table or we do a Zoom meeting, what we've got to do now. Yeah. Uh, and discuss what needs improving, what needs changing, where we go, where we visit. Yeah. Well, that's proper so, teamwork, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, it is. It's that, a proper that's what, teamwork. It yeah. is, and that's what, that's what we wanted. That's what me and Andy wanted. We don't want bickering and falling out. We've had that. We've had people that have come into the team, they've used us, and then they've gone off and done their own stuff. Yeah. Uh, and that's not what we're, what we're about. We are a kind-hearted team. We'll, we'll, help, we'll help anyone. If another team needs some help, we'll go and help them. You yeah. know, if they want to do a joint investigation somewhere, we'll do it. I mean, we're how, open to all you... that. How do you choose your locations? Do, do people call you in or is, is there just a location that you, you say, oh, I'd really like to investigate that. It sounds interesting. Yeah, we, we, we normally go out and look for, look for places. Some well-known, some others aren't. And we, we'd rather do the ones that aren't so well-known because it's mm. been, they've been done over and over again. 
And the spirits must get fed up of people going in there saying, come and interact with us, come and do this, come and do that, you know. Yeah. Uh, we just think that if you go to a new location and it's it's haunted or it's got spirits or it's got spirit activity, that's fantastic. You know, we'll, we'll, we'll go and do a lesser place more than a well-known place. Mm. How do you prepare for that? You know, when you're when you're there, when you first get to the location, how do, as a team, how do you prepare to do an investigation? We, uh, as we arrive, we, we we all meet either outside or inside the building. Uh, we'll discuss what we're going to do. We always do a baseline test. We always go around each room, no matter how big it is or how small it is. We check out how, what the temperatures are. If there's any EMF in the background that's it's causing it, anything to go off, any, any of the devices. Uh, what do you mean by that. EMF? You know, for those people who don't understand. Yeah, it's what ele ele electronic uh, magnetic field. So hmm. anything that's living produces an EMF field of its own, hmm. their own energy, their own. Uh, it's anything like ele even electrical cables. It's all like that. Our bodies yeah. are, a, are just nothing but energy, really. At the end of the yeah. day. Uh, so you go into sorry Dave so you go into these uh, places and w when you do the uh, original scope or whatever it is called <laughs> um, is, the, is that primarily to help you eliminate that no it's not that wire in the wall mm -hmm. no it's not that pipe under the ground is, is that what you try to do? Yeah, we, we go in, uh, we'll go around with devices. Gemma, it's usually Gemma that does this. Uh, Gemma and one of the team members will go around each room. Uh, she'll go with a notepad and pen. Uh, she'll write down the EMF spikes and what it was. I'm just going to show you this. This is what I've got it on at the moment. I don't know if you can see that, but it's saying oh, yeah. 666. <laughs> 666. <laughs> Yeah, we'll go, she'll, she'll go round. I'll, I'll, I'll the just room. do this then, shall I? Yeah, please, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's changed now, thank God. Uh, yeah, so she'll go round with notepad and pen. She'll she'll get the baseline test, which is looking for EMF spikes. Anything from uh, 0 0.1 to 0 0.5 is background EMF. Mm. Anything that goes up higher than 0 0.5 is something significant it's it's not it's not what's actually in the background it's not electrical it's not uh anything else it, it's it's completely different when it goes from 0 0.5 upwards it, you can tell that it's 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 probably is going to be paranormal activity or hmm. something trying to manifest itself yeah uh, um, we'll do, do you do with... that on every investigation we have started to do that on every on yeah. uh, season four because we want to change stuff. We want to go in and we also want to tell people what devices we're using and how they work. Mm. And, you know, oh, that's good. what they're there for. Because I yeah. don't think enough shows do that anymore. They just go mm. in and start investigating. A lot of places don't do EMF backgrounds or tests or baseline tests. Uh, we'll, we'll go in now. Before we go to a, a location, we'll check the history, if there's any history at all. You can't always find uh, history on locations, which is tough. Uh, and that's not very good for when we get. Oh, we've lost you. You're frozen. Hello? It's not that cold yet. Hello? <laughs> well, I can see Michael. I can't see Dave. don't know what's happened with Dave. That's weird, isn't it? I don't know. Does he have to refresh the browser? I don't know. Um, Maybe gone. Spirit didn't like what he was talking about. <laughs> well, do you know, isn't this weird, Michael? Isn't that weird? Because he was showing like 666 on the uh, EMF meter, yeah. which, which actually looked like 888 when I was looking at it on the screen. Uh, but, you know, I, I, I take Dave's word for it. It's saying 666. Yes, it but, did. Yeah. Okay, uh, I think he's trying to reboot. Yeah, okay, <laughs> he's gone completely. Um, but that is so weird that that's just happened like that. There we go. We should have him in a minute. And uh, no video. Oh, there we go. Hey, go. Dave. Can you, can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear yeah. you now. <laughs> I couldn't believe that. 
I mean, let's talk it. Let's talk it away. The next, the next minute, it says computers crash, crashing, and then the lights on this device start flashing. Yeah, I know. So I've got spirits here. This with this with them. Really mischievous, I tell you. It's yeah. Well, we've just been talking about that, haven't we, Michael? Yeah. And we we've seen that it's so interesting that you should be talking. You showed us the meter with the mm -hmm. reading on the meter. Yeah. Yeah. And you were talking about your partner in America and all the stuff that's going on there and the fact you're having nightmares. So yeah, we've both been saying, yeah, oh, maybe. Maybe because we're talking about that, that yeah. has yeah. brought that, whatever that is. Because my spirit guide is Egyptian. Right. Which is interesting, I was talking about that. It's weird because uh, she lives across, not far from her, there's, a, there's an army air force base. Hmm. And they're constantly getting UFO sightings as well. Ah. Getting okay, what? They're constantly getting UFO sightings as well. <laughs> so they don't, we don't, we're thinking that these two things that are going on are, could be linked. Could be connected. Uh, yeah. yeah. Because she's had a black shadow figure where it's had really, it's really dark and it's got really dark, long, fin pointy fingers. Wow. Uh, she didn't go into too much detail telling me about this. And yet I had a dream things about a month later mm. that I was talking to her and this uh, hand actually came out of my phone and tried to grab me. Oh my gosh. Yeah. And it, 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 it that woke me up as well. I'm not surprised. Sort of, sort of like in a panicky mode thinking what's going on? Yeah. You know, cause I've never had, never had anything like that before. Yeah. So, uh, and we're oh. constantly on the phone doing video chats to each other. Uh, oh. And I can be talking to it, and she'll hear, we'll hear knocking on the patio doors. Well, she's on the top floor. Mm. So, because <laughs> I was there one night, and there was, there was two knocks on the patio door. And I said, it, who's knocking on your patio door? She said, no one. I said, I'm, she said, I'm on the top floor. So it's impossible for someone to be stood on, done, stood on a balcony knocking on the patio doors. Yeah. So, you know, I've heard things, and... Yeah, so it's, it's it's quite a thing she's going through at the moment, the ordeal because it, it seem to seem to be focusing on her youngest son, youngest son as well. Yeah. Uh, How old's the son? Uh, fourteen. Oh yes. And, and yeah. he, he's he's very open to spirit as well as yeah. Angela. As well as Angela, they're both yeah. open to spirits. Uh, so she's she's picking up stuff and he's picking up stuff and they're both saying what we've just seen. They don't yeah. say what they've seen. They ask each other what they've seen, or he'll, he'll, he'll draw a picture of what he's seen. Ah. And some of the stuff's quite scary, actually. Gosh. What, what, what he draws. Gosh. Uh, and, uh, you know, for the age of 14 as well, it's a very, uh, teenagers are very, very susceptible yeah. um, to spirit energy, um, as you know. Um, and so um, uh, they could they tend to attract poltergeist activity as well. Mm. Um, have you ever come across anything like that, like poltergeist activity when you've been doing any of your investigations? Uh, we haven't had poltergeist activity. I think the only place we had something that was poltergeist, we were thinking was poltergeist, was at uh, Morecambe Winter Gardens. Right. When, when we were packing up everything and the cameras were off mm. and a stone was thrown. Mm. And it landed on the wooden floor, and we went and checked uh, a twenty-foot radius of where we had this this stone fall, and there was nothing. There was no stone, no masonry fell off the ceiling, and nothing. Yeah. We just couldn't wow. find anything that that had, that had been thrown. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and that has always been an active location for us. We mm. we put uh, trigger coins out on a piece of paper. We put I put five in a row, drew, drew round them perfectly. Uh, when we came back at the end of the night, all five had moved as if the paper, not the coins had moved, but the paper had been pulled. Yeah. And wow. the coins have all moved in one go. Uh, and we have had a little girl uh, speaking down there. We've heard her, her voice uh, underneath the stage. So it, it was, it's quite an active place for us. That is more coming to gardens. Yeah. When you go back to a place that you've done before, like you're just describing, 
do you think that spirit know you're coming back? I think I think they do. I mean, the are spirits are intelligent. They're, they're not stupid. They're not thick. They must <laughs> recognize the same person or recognize the same people by voice or by the looks. Uh, and probably the way that we speak to them, we don't speak to them in an aggressive way. We don't. We're not ignorant. We're not. Uh, we don't treat them any any way we, like we treat a, a normal person, like our own team. We'll, we'll speak in a proper manner to them. Oh. I mean, you get some investigators nowadays that are going out and trying to be forceful. I demand yeah. you to speak to me. I demand you to do this. I demand, if if you're walking down the street and someone said to you, I demand you to put that, put that piece of paper up on the floor, would you do it? No, you wouldn't. Mm. You know, so why treat a spirit any, any other way than what you treat a person on, you know, out on the street? Yeah, it's about respect, isn't it? It is, at the end of the day, yeah. yeah. And there's something else I like about uh, what uh, you do as a group, um, is that you respect the location that you're going to, uh, yeah. in that you'll rule out all the other possibilities before you start. Yeah. So like, oh, there's like water supply there, there's an electrical supply there, that door opens and closes on its own because this is what yeah, happens. Yeah. So, so you rule all of that out, uh, first of all, and yeah. you respect the energy in the building. Yes, we do. We before do. you even start. Yeah, we do. Uh, yeah. We also, even even through the investigation going through the night, if we find a draft or we, we feel a draft, mm. For the nearest window to see if it's open or if it's causing a causing a draft, yeah. Or if it's door open, it's causing a vacuum where there's a, where there's a draft coming through. Yeah. We'll, we'll we'll try to debunk as much as we can before we we we, we even say it's paranormal. Yeah. You know. Yeah, that's good. Ninety ninety percent of the time, it, it you can rationalise what it is. You know, you can find an open window. You can find a, a broken piece of glass in a window and it's causing a draft. You know, and we we. We try to strive ourselves on debunking stuff before we say it's paranormal. Mm. Yeah, and, and you you film most of your um, investigations. You film, don't you? So you've got um, how many series now under your belt? We've got three series on Amazon Prime now. Yeah. Uh, the third series is different than the first two. It's mm. more like the team we've got now. Uh, we're all a big family. We, we try to rationalise things. We do a lit walk through around the building first. But with Series 4, we've stopped that and we just go from doing all the baseline, setting up the CCTV and giving a bit of history at the beginning. Because I've heard people say that when they watch some of these paranormal uh, programmes on TV, they do too much history mm. and the people don't want that. They, they want you to get straight into investigating whereas we like to go around even if we don't film we'll go around lit first just to get used to the area you yeah. know otherwise you if you're walking around straight away in the dark you're going to be falling over things mm. yeah. so you know we, we, tr we try to keep things simple and we just yeah it's, it's going to be keep completely different in series four but you bring the history yeah. in at the end, don't you? To you, you sort of match it all up to what you've experienced. It's absolutely it. It dumbfounds me that because I've with me doing the editing, uh, and at the end of the end of the series, end of the episode, I can go back and think, well, we've got a history, and then Andy Andy's come out the medium, and he's got everything spot on, mm. and it it, it just. It defound, you know, I'm I'm just outstanding. It's outstanding sometimes how, how much he gets correct. Mm. I mean, obviously, there are always going to be other things because he's getting other spirits coming in at the same time. That are, you know, because he, he he's he's just like you, you must know how, how it is. You get so many people coming in talking at the same time, and you're trying to break it all up to who's talking to you at once. Mm -hmm. uh, and he does get some really good things coming through, and uh, yeah, it's, it's it's turned out to be one of the best my best friends I can have really. Mm. I agree with you Dave that the uh, the history aspect is not what people tune in to see and that's why like for example at Rescue Mediums as I think you know yeah. we've done uh, we do the first three acts you see it sounds like a show now <laughs> <laughs> not meant to we do the first three acts um, in what Jackie does in the research and what the homeowners 
And then in Act Four, we do the history. We wait till mm. the end to do the history. Because people people could go to the History Channel if they wanted history. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't go to a paranormal channel and say, okay, so um, in 1066, who was it that got the arrow through the eye? <laughs> was it Bill or was it Harold? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's why... I try to keep it to a, a two, two or three minute segment at the beginning, just to give the people that are watching an idea of what, where we are and yeah, what sort of little bit, little yeah. bit of history is there. Yeah. Uh, and then at the end, I clarify then with what Andy said and he's come out with, mm. and I'm saying, well, Andy came up with this and this is what we found later on when we, we delve deeper into, into the history. Because mm. Andy can come up with stuff that's not even, you can't even find on the internet. Yeah. Well, that's you good. Know, it's, 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 yeah. it's just really, you know, it, like I, said, I can't say enough about him because he just comes up with so much stuff. I mean, I've been out walking with the dogs and I've, I've done, been doing a live and Andy's come on the phone and he says, just go back a bit. I said, what do you mean? Just go back. He goes, he said, go back about 20 feet. I said, why? He says, because the young lady's committed suicide there. And he's given me the first name and then, and he's tried to get the second name as well, but he doesn't always get it, which is a shame. It must be frustrating for him. Mm. And uh, the stuff that he, he just comes up with straight away is, is, I've got someone here now talking to me, he says, because we did a, we did a bit on our show the night with him because he, he kept moaning about, you don't have me on there, do you? So we got him on and he says, he's talking away and we're asking him questions. He said, I've got someone here now he's trying to put in and, you know, and, he says, I'll, I'll, I'll leave him till I've finished. So it's, 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 it's like that, we went to... That's the show, the show that you're talking about now, now, Dave. That is your chat show that you do with Gemma, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, it is, yeah, on a Wednesday yeah. night, yeah. And yeah. we just have different guests on. That, 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 that just came about because with the COVID, we, we, there was nothing going on. You couldn't go out investigating. I know some, some people did, but I'm not going to mention who. Uh, so we just thought we'll come up with a show, we'll get some people on, we'll, we'll try and get some big names on if we can. Mm -hmm. um, luckily we did. We got some really nice people and they were really down to earth. It's, it's unbelievable sometimes. And we just started doing that every week and it, it, it just kept on going. But it, it sounds great. And I know that I'm lucky enough to be on the show on December Oh, Gemma said December the 2nd or December yeah, the 5th. Yeah. I can't remember. So I'm really looking forward to that. Oh, you'll you have, you have, you have some good fun. You'll have, a, you'll have, you'll have quite a, a lot of laughing because we do, okay. we do have, <laughs> have a bit of banter as well. So <laughs> good. We, like, we like a bit of banter, don't we? <laughs> yeah, and that, that's, what, that's what's good about our team as well because I'm going to say, they all pick on me because I'm small. So they all say small things about me. So then I have, we all end up picking on each other, but it's just a bit of banter at the end of the day. And it, yeah. it also gets the spirit energy going as well, because if you're just miserable all the time or you, you're so serious all the time, yeah, you need a bit of banter and you need a bit of fun as well, because I think that gets all the energy going as well. Definitely, yeah. Um, and I think it attracts spirits that are um, not more elevated, but just like happier, more open. Yeah. Because yeah. if you're miserable all the time, you're going to get the Scrooges come in. Yeah. But if you're happy, you're probably going to get Peter Pan. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. I love it. What plans have you got in the pipeline? Are you allowed to tell us, Dave, about future uh, shows? No, we've got one in the pipeline in the minute. It's early days. We're not getting no replies from it yet. So it oh. might be down to the COVID. It might not. Uh, we have got some locations that are private that we want the what the person that owns the place wants to keep private at the moment right until we till we're finished shooting but we are going to revisit Mork and winter gardens mm. we've got uh, a public event at Drake low tunnels booked for next april uh we're back at the village mansfield we've got a host of places that we've, we've, we've wrote down and to and try and book in we've got mm. gressley old all down in derbyshire is it Dav no Staffordshire? Sorry, uh, uh, we've got other locations, like I said, booked, and uh, yeah, I mean, we're, we're trying to keep to the lower venues, like we like we said. I mean, some of the venues are quite dear, 
I mean, we did want to do some of the castles around around the around mm. the, the UK, but they, they're just asking too much for yeah. too little places to to investigate. Actually, yeah. so yeah. We've, we've just put them by the side and left them. Do you find that you get a lot of um, or any resistance from the people that own these uh, structures or? Or, or these businesses or whatever it is, do you find that they are um, like, no, 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 I don't want you here? Or are they usually pretty open? So Most of them are pretty open. Uh, but the problem is they, they want so much money for the locations because it's, it's been done so many times. But they're only prepared to give you so, certain areas or a certain amount of time to investigate. And it's, it's not long enough. It's, you can't investigate a big castle in three hours. It's, it's completely impossible. So what is the scariest place that you've ever investigated? That has got to be uh, the Masonic Hall in Liverpool. Uh, mm. this, this, I, I like going back there, but I don't like going to two of the places in there, two of the rooms. Right. One is the Egyptian room. Oh, there's the Egyptian thing again. <laughs> yeah, and one, and one is uh, the boiler room. And it all stems down from a negative spirit there of a man that keeps a little child at bay. Right. He won't let her pass over. Oh. And every time I go to them two locations in that, in that building, I take on the persona of that girl. So right. I, get, I get scared. I start getting, the heart starts, starts beating. I start getting emotional where I start crying. Uh, mm. So I'm, I'm basically taking on, on her fears of what he's doing. Yeah. Is, do you think, she, is she aware of what she's doing? Is she aware of you being there? Or, or how, how do you think it works? I think, I think she, she's aware of when I go there because she doesn't, she doesn't seem to uh, approach any of the other team members. It's always right. me. Yeah. Uh, and the second time I went, the, the, the actual man, the negative spirit, tried to uh, take over me. Yeah. And the medium we had there at the time, he said, the guy is actually stood right behind you. Mm. Uh, and I could feel it, it, it was really cold behind me and the room went, everyone kept saying the room's gone really cold. Mm. And that room, the Egyptian room's actually got a portal in the corner right. and it, it's open all the time. So he, he comes and goes when he wants to. Oh gosh, I'd have to close that portal. Yeah, I'd have, yeah. <laughs> I would have to close it and seal it and put somebody guarding it. I really would. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so she's obviously she's obviously attached herself to you because she feels secure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But as soon as I went back to the base room at that that specific time after I started getting really upset, I went back to the base room and everything just lifted off me. Hmm. I wasn't scared anymore. My heart wasn't pounding. I wasn't emotional. Hmm. It was just in that location of the boiler room hmm. where he actually keeps her at bay. Uh, <sighs> and we have, we have got on camera where we've seen child's fingerprints in the, in the dust on top of a box. Hmm. And you can tell they're not adult because they're, they're, too, they're too small for adults. Yeah. And they were just four little fingertips and a little thumb. Oh, bless uh, her. And then when I came back to the base room end of the night, I had a dust dust handprint on me on me top of my thigh of a little girl, of a little child's handprint. Wow. Um, we, we, we got that on camera, so we made sure we, made, we got that actually on camera. And before I brushed myself down, because it was it was we couldn't we couldn't figure out why. And the media just come to me and said, "Yeah, that is a little girl's handprint. It is a little child's." Yeah. Because we were yeah. discussing whether it was big, it was too, whether it was big enough to be a child or if it was too big and it was mm -hmm. an adult. But we said no, it was, it was, it was a little child. Yeah. So interesting play. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't. I didn't, feel, I didn't feel, yeah, I, I didn't feel it at the time. Yeah. Hmm. Interesting. And I, I, I like the fact that um, you you've tried things like you know the dust uh, and uh, is that a, a, an adult and you're ruling things out. Yeah, uh, you know, to, it's like you're going through the layers to find out. Uh, okay, I'm going through the feelings as well. So, uh, do you work with a spirit guide? Do you have? Uh, do you protect yourself before you go on to these uh, any of these locations? I, I'm one of these people that say no. I don't want right. protection because I like my, I like to be open to everything. Oh, uh, I'm cringing of, now. I'm cringing. The, the, the rest, 
that's probably why I get too much paranormal activity in the house. Yeah. Uh, that's, the rest of the team do. Uh, Andy makes yeah. sure that everyone's protected. He, protect, he protects all the rest of the team before we start an investigation. Brilliant. Yeah. I have always gone in open <laughs> and <laughs> not protected. Well, you deserve everything that's thrown at you. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, <laughs> It's usually Sean. It's usually Sean now. Our, our cameraman, our tech guy, that usually gets something happened to him. Because last time we went out, he had a bag on his back, a rucksack, and someone pulled the cords on his rucksack. And I've never seen him jump so so quick in all my life. Wow. So yeah. Well, uh, you know, um, you were going in unprotected, like riding a motorbike without a crash helmet. Oh my God! It is. You're right. As long as you can deal with, as long as you can deal with whatever comes your way, I think you're okay. Jackie's a very big. Uh, uh, she loves the protection aspect, but uh, if you can deal with it, then yeah, I agree. When you're way more open, I think. I think if you if you're more open, I think you, you are susceptible to getting more uh, interaction with spirit in the way of them touching you. Uh, I've been to a number of places now where I've had a little girl hold my hand and the medium has seen that. He's seen the, the, the girl actually holding me two fingers. Mm. Uh, and I've been touched, poked in the back uh, in another place. So it, it, I don't know. It, it's, it's just me. Well, that's you see, where, that's the that's thing. I because um, I, I, I allow spirit to overshadow me, um, whether it's on rescue mediums or whether it's on investigation. But I do it for, for a reason. I do it so that I can get the story as quickly as possible. That's why I allow it to happen. Yeah. But I'm always, I'm always grounded and always protected before uh, I do that. And that's to conserve my energy, not to stop spirit connecting mm -hmm. with me. Uh, because I open all my chakras before I start. Yeah. So I am, uh, I'm very, very open. So I'm aware of, you know, somebody touching my face or blowing on me or walking past or anything like that. But I'm protected. So that's why I do protection is to conserve my energy mm -hmm. levels, not to protect me from, from spirit energy. Um, mm -hmm. And I always make sure I close down when I finish because I don't want any of them coming home with me. <laughs> they can, <laughs> if I can't help them over, yeah. they can that, stay where that, they that's, are. That's one thing we always say that, on an investigation at the end of the night, we always turn around and say, hmm. the spirits that are at this location, you cannot follow his own. You must stay where you are. Yeah. Because some, some, you know, I know a couple of people have had something follow on, but I never yeah. have. Touch yeah. board. Yeah. Uh, no, they come through a telephone at you with the hand. Yeah, yeah, they do. <laughs> so, yeah, I, I, we always say you can't follow his own, even if we're doing a... a an urban explore investigation because we we do that as we do that as well now. Uh, yeah. We go to places and we the investigating is is a paranormal scene, uh, and we always say in the night, you can't follow his own. You must stay here. You cannot follow his own. Mm. So, and hopefully, yeah. hopefully they'll take note. <laughs> yeah. You know what, Dave? It's been absolutely fascinating talking to you today. And I know Michael would agree with me when I say we'd love to have you back on to hear that more of what you, you know, your expert. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It'd be an absolute pleasure. It would and be so, absolutely wonderful. It, yeah, truly it would. And um, we'll put a link at the end of the video to how people can uh, get in touch with you, where they can watch your shows. I mean, you're on Amazon. You've got all of the uh, uh, three seasons have you got on yeah yeah uh, on amazon and you're just about to do the fourth when covid's uh all yeah. the restrictions are lifted they we're, can we're also get just, you... yeah we're actually doing a uh we've got a spin-off series coming out as well on amazon oh great which is, which, which is just me and sean the tech guy hmm. uh we do the urban exploring paranormal so there's an urban exploring pan paranormal one coming out as well so that's oh, yeah. just i think eight eight episodes i think i look forward to looking at great. that and then, um, you know, people can also see you on veryparanormal.com yep. um, as well. And they can uh, get you on Facebook with your chat show with Gemma. Yeah. Every, every Wednesday. Wednesday. Yeah. Every Wednesday. Just, just, now, yeah, just, just type in entering the unknown paranormal on Google and it'll just come up with everything, with, with, you know, that's associated with us. Brilliant. Brilliant. Well, thank you very much, Dave. And we'll see pleasure. you again. Thank you very much. Thanks, Michael. Thank you.